Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, if you want to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12, I just was going to make a quick video showing something that God showed me in my life, um, and then God turned it into a little bit of a Bible study. Praise the Lord. So we're going to read a little bit today from the Bible, and I'm going to show you, uh, I don't know what I'm going to label this uh uh, the title of this video will be, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil, because um, that's the main point of this study. But I wanted to talk about a little bit more things in, as I was reading. So, we're going to start in verse 12. Please have your King James Bibles open. I'm a King James Bible believer. This is God's perfect written word in English, okay, for the English-speaking people. Uh, don't come here with all these Bible perversions. They'll deceive you. Uh, they're satanic Bibles. So, Chapter 5, verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. That's what this video is about. But you'll see that I'll be admonishing myself, too. Okay. Verse 13. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Okay. And be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded. Okay? Warn them that are unruly. That's what um, some of us Bible believers do that are in ministry. Okay? I've done it before. Okay? Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. We're to have patience. Um, in the study that I did about Christmas, uh, there were some people that weren't patient. <laughs> there was people that answered a matter before they hear it because they evidently, I got thumbs down. Uh, probably a lot of people didn't watch the full video. Um, but like I said, we're supposed to be patient towards all men, not just saved, but lost. I'll be doing another study on uh, peace. Is it a contradiction? Uh, the Bible talks about how Jesus didn't come to bring peace but a sword, yet then we're commanded to be peacemakers, okay, with the lost world, yet we're supposed to, you know, bat war, good warfare. But this is we're supposed to have patience towards all men. Verse 15, see that none render evil for evil unto any man. Okay. Any man. But every follow, no, it says any man. Oh, that's just Christians. No, it says any man, once again. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Remember we talked about in other videos where the Bible expresses the, the people that God ordains, the rulers that God ordains and puts in leadership, as long as they're a terror to evil. It says right there, but among yourselves, uh, see, but ever follow that which is good. It's okay to obey the, a government that's a terror to evil. But when they become a terror to good, you don't have to follow that government. When they start telling you you can't have a King James Bible, you can't preach the true gospel, and so on and so forth, you don't have to obey that. Okay? But you're supposed to be followers with, uh, be ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves, Christians, and to all men. Okay? Remember, when you have a Christian that starts teaching falsehood, you don't have to follow them like ministries. You don't have to follow them in that area. There's things that they can be wrong on, but you don't have to turn your back on them. Okay? They teach a false gospel. Okay? You don't follow them. That's both among yourselves. They're not teaching a good thing if they're teaching a false gospel. They're teaching um, that you can lose your salvation. It's not eternal security. They teach that all these other Bibles, Bible perversions... You know, the NIV, the NASV, on and on and on. All the Bibles after the King James Bible are Bible perversions, including the New King James, which isn't new. It's, to it's a transition book Bible perversion, Satanic Bible, to get you away from the King James Bible. It takes and blends the new versions. Uh, Texas Receptus is the King James Bible, and Nestle's Elan, Greek text. These are Greek books. Um is all the Bible perversions, and it blends the two to try to get you away. My first Bible that I started with as a false Christian was the New King James. Never had a King James. And then from there, it didn't take long for them to get me away from the New King James and get me into an NIV. Okay, I had an NIV and I think a New American Standard, NASB. Um, 
So that's what that whole thing is. But like I said, even with among ourselves, there's people that you don't follow because, um, oh, I'm sorry, those are false converts. But there's some people that parrot PWC. They'll parrot what they, like there's times I had to get rid of some of the stuff from my lost professing Christian life because I was being a PWC. I was parroting what people were saying. But there's times where even someone who's saved can turn against the book and fall into error and apostasy and you don't follow them. But remember, the major doctrines are the big things. We just talked about it. The gospel, Bible version issue, eternal security, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away of the body of Christ, the Godhead. Okay. So, uh, rejoice evermore. Verse 17. Pray without ceasing. We've talked about that before. Pray without ceasing. And what we're talking about, the appearance of evil, you need to pray that the Lord opened your eyes. He opened my eyes to something in my home that I will share with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. But pray the Lord says, hey, Lord, is my home a godly home? Is there something in my home that I'm not supposed to have? Is Satan trying to creep into my home? Am I inviting things into my home that I'm not supposed to? Recently, it had to do with Christmas. Are you inviting paganism into your home? All right. Uh, Halloween, um, Easter, all this stuff, uh, movies, TV shows, video games, um, if you have a problem with addictions, alcohol, drugs, uh, whatever the addiction is, are you inviting things in your home that allows Satan to go up there and say, see, see what he's doing, see what he's doing? You got to punish him. All right. You got to punish him. You're letting Satan into your home so he can say, hey, God, you got to punish him. Be careful about live, letting wicked things into your home. Okay, But one of the things you can do is pray. Lord, open my eyes. Lord, show me the truth. Lord, open my eyes about Christmas, about Halloween. Open my eyes about uh, the true gospel to make sure that, hey, I have the true gospel. Uh, the Bible version issue. Eternal security. We can go through the whole list again. I like going through the list because these are the major doctrines that I hold people accountable. When you're looking at someone that professes to be saved, I go through all these this list. Uh, Pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Godhead. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Make sure that everything you have you can give thanks for. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'll be showing you, my pans. Okay. I give God thanks for the food that I can make and that he provides and everything and teaching me to cook a little bit better, health, eat and healthier. Okay. But you give God thanks in all things. Uh, 19. Quench not the spirit. 20. Despise not prophesying. Prophesying there is not talking about people saying what's going to happen um, a week from now as far as things that in, in this life. However, prophesying that the, I believe this is talking about is you can talk about the catching away of the body of Christ. Pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away of the body of Christ. You can talk about the time of Jacob's trouble, back with scripture. It's prophesying, letting people know what's going to happen in the future. Um, the millennial kingdom. I know it's not in the Bible, but let's say what's in the Bible. A thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. One day is a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. Day of, of uh, I can't remember what it says. I didn't have this in my notes the day of Christ, but it's talking about a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. You can talk about that. It's future events. It's prophesying. This is going to happen. The new heaven and the new earth. Okay. That's what that is. You're not to despise it. Okay. There's people who despise the true teaching of the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. There's people who despise, we teach, that in the time of Jacob's trouble, it's works. Faith and works. It's not just faith alone. Okay. A lot of things people despise when we stand to the Bible, when we prophesize. So as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're not to despise the truth when we're talking about future events. The Bible's talking about future events. Okay? Talks about a great falling away. I left that out for today before the time of Jacob's trouble. I know it talks about it for the time of Jacob's trouble, but today we're seeing a lot of the falling, some of the falling away where people are falling away from their stands from absolute truth. The... What did we talk about? The studies I did, um, it was over 50% of the world's population, I think we're at 7 billion, so 3.5 billion people believe in a Jesus Christ. And like I said, there's not one person I haven't come across that hasn't heard the name Jesus Christ. 
It's hard to witness anymore today because when you go to people, they've already heard of a Jesus Christ and they've got it stuck in their head, their own image of what Jesus Christ is, however they were told. Not the true Jesus Christ. Sometimes you will come across somebody. Okay? But the falling away is happening today. Right? Verse 21, prove all things. We'll get back to that in just a second. Hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. Do you know that you're supposed to prove that you're a Christian? You're supposed to prove that you're a Bible-believing Christian? God-fearing? Okay, I named this uh, ministry Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries for a reason. Okay, a Christian is going to be a Bible believer and a Christian is going to fear God. A true Christian. When you show them sin in their life, they're going to fear God and want to get that out. They're going to want to abstain from all appearance of evil. Fearing God isn't just knowing God, because people will say that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So they'll take knowledge of the holy, because there's a dot comma, so it's talking about two things. And they'll take that and say, fearing God is knowing God. No, fearing God is fearing God. And yes, you do know that the chastisement of the Lord, you fear the chastisement of the Lord. When you get saved, you fear God's wrath. Okay, prove all things. You're to prove in your life as you walk and as you live your life and the words you use and the stands you take, you're to prove that you're a Christian. It says prove all things, not just some things, all things. You don't have to prove that you're saved. It's just, you know, you prove that you stand for the body. You're to prove that you are a Christian. You don't just take people's word for it. You don't take my word for it. You watch a lot of my videos and my ministry, how I try to live my life. I've done videos like I'm doing today showing that God's cleaning up my life. The addictions, I struggle with sin. I fall back into sin sometimes. Just because I'm behind a camera and I'm trying to be in ministry doesn't mean I'm perfect. Okay. And the thing is, is a lot of people, I want to throw this in real quick, a lot of people look at us that get into ministry full time and they expect us to be perfect, and when we fail in an area or fall back into sin and everything, depending on the sin, there's times where you have to step down um, for a while or even permanently if you've really screwed up, um, losing your testimony with people. But there's times where we're not going to be perfect, and there's people that will just turn on you in a heartbeat because they're trying to hold us. We're held accountable by the Lord to a higher standard. That's why I get on to these, uh, I did in the past, some of the Bible-believing ministries. I believe these people are saved, but God holds us to a higher standard, which means I can hold them to that high standard than I would a, prof a professing Christian, a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian that's struggling in their life. Okay, But we're to prove all things, and we're to hold fast that which is good. We talked about that up above, okay? Good according to Scripture. Right. Now here's the verse we're talking about, 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. The Bible versions like to say certain kinds of evil or some kinds of evil. And they do that because Satan wants you to put evil in front of you. And when I make videos about, you know, getting this evil thing out of your life, this wickedness, whether it's about video games, movies, and TV shows, um, whether it's about false teachings, these Bible perversions, Christmas, these holidays, which is man-ordained days. Remember, a holy day, you have the Sabbath day and a holy day. Uh, I did a teaching showing that they're separate in the sense that there's still days that the old, in the Old Testament you were commanded to keep by God. That's why um, a Sabbath day and a holy day are God-ordained days, and there's consequences for not following. There's works in the Old Testament. It's not faith alone in the Old Testament. There's consequences for not obeying these days. But all the holidays we have today is man-ordained days. And when I stand against them and tell you you need to abstain from all appearance of evil, don't invite Satan into your home, it's admonishing. I had to do it. I had to have like God came into my life and said, hey, I want to clean your life up and get a lot of this junk out. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Verse 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, Okay. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, I wanted to read all that because it's very important. These are instructions uh, for a Christian and how we're to treat the lost world and saved. 
but mainly we're to abstain from all appearance of evil. We're to cling to that which is good, not that which is bad. And there's people out there that'll cling to things that are bad. Recently it was a, um, Christmas was a recent one, so that's why I'm bringing it up. But in my ministry, one of the biggest things that I had a lot of people fight on me and turn against me was video games. They held video games above the Word of God. And I had a lot of people get mad at me, even people that really didn't follow the ministry. Um, the enemies of God, of His Word, really attacked me on that. But Christmas, I lost a... Someone brought it to my attention. I lost subscribers. I don't care about the subscriber list. I don't care about how many views. Uh, right now, I'm doing a big project. Um, this... Uh, YouTube channel is falling apart. There's errors in it. I'm not being able to do things. So I had a backup channel way in the past and I'm trying to fix that uh, backup channel that's working 100% and thinking of switching over to that channel because I they won't listen to me. They won't fix this channel that I'm on. So I'm trying to work on that. Um, so abstain from all appearance of evil. So if you want to turn to Revelation 12, 1 through 9, just something I found and I saw in the city here in Brookings. I couldn't find a picture of it. I should have taken a picture of it. I had family over. I was running around a lot. 1 Corinthians 10, 25 through 28. Oh, not 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry. I'm skipping ahead. Revelation 12, 1 through 9. Turn to Revelation 12, 1 through 9. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Notice the word great isn't there, just wonder, in, another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her children as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child. Am I supposed to go that far? Yeah. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up in, unto God and into his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, and they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Talking about the Jewish, Jewish people fleeing uh, the, uh, the, abomination, the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place. They're running from Satan who stands up and says, I'm now Jesus Christ, I'm your Messiah. And he just takes over, and all the, a lot of the Jews that are faithful to God and realize that Jesus Christ is their king, that the real Jesus Christ, they're running and fleeing to the hills. Okay. Uh, 203 score days. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out that old... And I kept going through all this because dragon's what we're talking about. Stop me for a second. Dragon's what we're talking about. Who's this dragon? Okay. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which devoureth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay. He's going to stand up in the new temple that's built and claim, I'm God, I'm Jesus Christ, I'm your Messiah. Okay. He's going to do all these false wonders. He's going to be a fake, but he's going to be able to deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay, He's going to be able to deceive. So I want to show a picture here real quick of the God of Halloween. Okay, I saw this and was like, this isn't really what I saw in our town. It's just I saw something in our town and when I was doing research, I found this picture. It's a dragon. Okay, it's a blow up dragon for Halloween. Okay. The God of Halloween is Satan. Okay. Now that's just obvious uh, brother in Christ uh, brother Brian of King James Video Ministries did a great study on Halloween and how satanic it is and it's got pagan origins and no matter how much they try to sugarcoat it 
in a sense to make it look innocent and okay for Christians. It's not an okay. It's a pagan holiday. No Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman should be celebrating that holiday, or holiday in any way, shape, or form, promoting it in any way, shape, or form. I know um, Chick track uh chick publications one of their big promotions to buy you know they become a business they're trying to sell these gospel tracks the gospel is not that complicated you don't need a million different gospel tracks and the one of their big promotions is is you can hand out gospel tracks with candy on halloween and i know brothers in christ that do that i don't give them a hard time for doing it but honestly you shouldn't be celebrating that holiday or promoting it in any way shape or form okay it's paganism okay you're promoting paganism Right. They're always trying to sugarcoat it and make a way. Satan's trying to get you to have a part in that holiday. But in town, I drove by and I saw this big blow up of a dragon. Here's the next pictures, okay, for Christmas. You want to know who the unknown God, the unknown God of Christmas? It's Satan, okay? It's not Jesus Christ, okay? The Jesus Christ of Christmas is a counterfeit Jesus Christ, okay? Um, I agreed with Brother Brian's study when he talked about the real Jesus Christ. I disagree with him when he says that the unknown uh, God of Christmas is, G is the real Jesus Christ. No, it isn't. It's Satan. Okay. The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay? Satan is not sitting around twiddling his thumbs saying, well, I got nothing to do. I'm not going to be doing anything. Well, maybe I should be planning the downfall of Jesus Christ, but you know... Uh, I'm just, you know, just a stupid guy here. He's not. He's been around since after, during the creation, not before creation, during the creation God created him. And he's not stupid, okay? He, he's been planning and planning. He tried to kill Jesus Christ when uh, Mary was pregnant. He got to the point where he did succeed. I killed Jesus Christ on the cross. And Jesus overcame the law of sin and death. He overcame death itself, okay? He, he failed, but he's always planning and scheming. And at this point, I always said I believe Satan knows that he's going to go down. But sometimes I believe he, when you read scripture, he believes he still has a chance. You know, he's going to try to wipe out all the Jews. And if he can do that, he makes God out to be a liar. He's going to try to make every Bible-believing, God-fearing man and woman to stumble and fall so he can sit up there and accuse us. The Bible says he's up in heaven accusing the brethren night and day. Okay? Um, we're to abstain from all appearance of evil. And this is something I saw recently driving through town. And I looked at that and I went, that's the God of Christmas. And it is. So, uh, so that's something I saw recently. Uh, just, I wanted to throw that in there. I wish I could have found pictures of it in town. For some reason, I looked in uh, pictures of the holiday of um, Brookings, Oregon. And I could not find a picture of them taking a picture of that. And it was at a park. All right. So, uh, next thing from my life, but remember, I look at this and I say, okay, I'm admonishing and I'm trying to correct brothers and sisters in Christ when it comes to Christmas, when it comes to all the other things we talked about, video games, false teachings, uh, major doctrine, uh, any other addictions and everything, uh, things that aren't good, clinging to that which is good, okay? But remember, uh, some people made videos against me. I saw the title. I don't watch videos, but sometimes people point me to them saying that I don't know what a certain verse is that talks about, um, let's look at it. I used a verse about um, judgment must first begin at the house of God. Uh, and I sometimes misspell words. I, can't, I have a hard time with words. Not a good speller. Am I spelling? I guess I'm spelling that word wrong. All right, because uh, I don't want this going forever. Um, but judgment must first begin at the house of God. It starts with me. Why? Because my body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. And I always say that judgment first begins at yourself as a Christian. Okay. Secondly, judgment goes to then once you're judging yourself, God's cleaning up your life. God will open your eyes and you can see other people, brothers and sisters in Christ, and you can judge them according to Scripture. Not feelings and opinions, but according to Scripture. Okay, And the reason that you have the verse about the plank 
versus the speck in your eye, talking about being a hypocrite, is because you're not judging yourself first, you're skipping yourself, and you're judging the world first, or the uh, brothers and sisters in Christ first. You don't have to do that. So it starts with me, and then I say the third part is judging the lost world by preaching the gospel to them. You're a sinner. People say, we're not supposed to judge, we're not supposed to judge. How can you preach the gospel if you're not judging? How can you tell somebody that they're a sinner on their way to hell, and they deserve to go to hell for sinning against God, and they need Jesus Christ without judging them? Uh, you know, telling them about some of the sins in their life. Right. So judgment begins here. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 25 through 28. We've talked about this before. Verse 25. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that be believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. I've eaten... Uh, dinner with lost people. I've been invited to dinner with lost people. Now, this doesn't justify sin. I've been invited to New Year's parties, New Year's Eve parties, where there's drinking and satanic style music, and I'm like, no, I'm not going. Okay? Um, Christmas parties, whatever, I'm not partaking in, in that stuff. Um, okay? But you can have dinner with the lost world. But here's the big thing, verse 28. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake. For your own sake. All right. Not just for his sake, but for conscience sake. You're a witness. It's a witness to say, Hey, I'm not eating anything to that offer to that false God. I'm a Bible believing, God fearing Christian man. I give God thanks for my food. I give him the all the glory. Um is it, we're supposed to give him glory in all things and thanks in all things. Okay, I, I can't eat that. Uh, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Okay, stop there. All right, the whole point is I found something on these pans that this is all the video is supposed to start out with showing, but I wanted to talk about things. I'll take pictures and show them right here, um, but. I was using these pans. I bought these pans. They're six months old. I pay. Everything's getting expensive. If, you, if you're like me, um, I've been trying to scrimp and save for the hillside. I need to do a retaining wall on the hillside because eventually that uh, deck's going to collapse if I don't do that. And I don't want that part of this corner of the house where this room is. Uh, it's starting to fall a little bit like sink. Um, so I got a retaining wall up there I'm trying to save up money for. So when I go shopping for stuff, there's times where I get in there and it's like, really? A pan? It's like 20 bucks uh, for the cheap ones that I have problems with, but for the good ones that last, I'm not paying 20 bucks every six months, ones that'll last a long, long time, they're expensive. So this wasn't easy. It's almost like I'll, it, you get tempted to compromise. But I was showing these to my brother and showing him how I clean them because they'll start to get really dark Instead of that silver color, it starts getting the burnt, dark color. And I was showing how I clean it. And as I was looking at the bottom, I looked at the bottom before. I cleaned the bottom before, but it just didn't hit me before. But there's a pentagram at the bottom of this. There's a pentagram with a circle around it. Satanism. Now remember, I didn't know about it, so God's not holding me accountable to it. But God didn't leave me ignorant. He showed me. Okay, This came in a two-pack. So I was like, well, maybe it's just that one. Nope, it's on that one too. Okay, The appearance of evil. Pray and the Lord will show you things in your home. Okay? The whole point of this video is just to show you that even though I believe every time I think I've got my house in order, God, thank you, I got my house. <laughs> That's when I fail big time too. God has got my house in order. He's helped me clean up my life. And this house is, you know, a Bible-believing, God-fearing home. It's uh, staying from all appearance free. There's times where I bring stuff in ignorantly. 
There's times I bring stuff in knowing that it's wrong, okay? Like I said, abstain from all appearance of evil. But this right here, I brought this into my house not knowing about it. So just advice to the brothers and sisters of Christ, you might want to look through stuff and look at the symbols that these companies are using uh, as a brand saying this represents our company. Now, you might say I'm stretching and taking this too far when I say this. I don't want this in my house because it's the appearance of evil. That's not taking it too far. But people might say I'm taking it too far when saying I was eating food offered unto idols unknowingly. Now that I know that this is here, I ain't cooking out of these pans. I'm throwing these pans away. I bought new pans, and like I said, I was shocked at how expensive things are getting. You go a long time without doing shopping other than for the basics, like household uh, items like cleaning supplies and food, which is my number one shopping. I don't hardly shop for anything else. When I started shopping for a new camera, thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, for your donations. I was shocked at how expensive cameras are. And like I said, I was told to wait till this month, towards the end of this month, and the next, they call it the next generation of cameras is coming out, so I can get a generation that's behind, that's fairly good, or not fairly good, really good, but you can get it at a discount price, because they're trying to get rid of the old, so they can bring in the new hardcore and get you to pay twice as much. So, um, but I had to throw these out, and I went to shop for those, and like I said, I was still shocked at how things get really expensive. Um, especially if you're on a budget. So I feel for those. I really do feel fear for those that are on a budget. Uh, I think I took it out and put it over here. But uh, another thing I want to do is say thank you to a sister in Christ. So far, one sister in Christ has wrote me two letters in my P.O. box that I'm paying for thinking that, you know, I thought maybe some people might use it uh, and send me some pictures of people for the, um, can't see all of it. I only got pictures at the top. Maybe I should put them towards the bottom. <laughs> I just don't want to put a big show about it. But I got a prayer board here with some pictures on it. And uh, I thought people might send me some pictures for the prayer board so I can look at it and always be praying for the brethren. I always am, but to do specific prayers for brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's a good reminder every time I come in here to do Bible studies, which I do a lot, to look at that board and say, okay, I need to take some time out to pray for these people. Okay, And it's a great reminder. But I thank the Sister in Christ for your letter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, it did. Uh, it's just God works it and... Uh, you apologize for it being late. It came at a great time to lift my spirits. So uh, God used you. Thank you. Thank you for this. Um, I just want to promote once again the P.O. Box. Brothers and Sisters of Christ, you can send me letters, uh, pictures okay, for the prayer wall. Uh, prayer requests. Uh, you can do it through email because I have an email. I don't mind email, but part of me just, I like setting out on the deck. And there's times where I can print out the email and go out there and sit on the deck. But that, you know, I don't know, just the old ways. Remember the old paths. So I just like, you know, the idea of I received a letter. And sometimes I'll open the letter and read it on the beach when I go into town to check the P.O. box with uh, her letters. Um, but I like going on the beach and reading scripture and stuff like that. I, I kind of wanted to get into this and start doing this stuff. But I didn't realize that people were, a lot of people are really hardcore anti um, mailing stuff. Um, I don't know. I was one of them. Okay. I had a grandparents in Oklahoma that I'd call them and they're passed away now. And I don't believe they were saved. And I was lost at the time, but I'd call them a lot to see how they're doing. But my grand, uh, um, she didn't, she didn't look at that as keeping in touch. She was what they call fashion the old past. She took letters as keeping in touch. You never wrote any letters, therefore you didn't keep in touch. Okay? And I remember that, and I thought I was just, I should have shown respect, and I should have wrote letters. I should have. Um, if I handwriting, as my handwriting's gotten horrible like it is, I could have typed out letters. Okay, I had a computer. I had a printer. I could have typed out letters. Some people don't have printers. I understand that. Some people's... Uh, Handwriting is horrible. I understand that. Email me. You know, that's no, there's nothing wrong with the emails. I just was really hoping that people would really get into using the P.O. Box. And I thank the Sister in Christ uh, for using the P.O. Box. But I didn't want this to go this long. So point of this whole video was I was wanting to show you what I've seen in town, the true God of Christmas, 
Not the unknown God in the Bible talks about Jesus Christ when Paul's trying to preach Jesus Christ to the people. Uh, the God of Christmas is Satan. Okay? But the biggest thing is, is pray, pray, pray. God will open your eyes. I always pray for the brethren. Your walk with the Lord, your struggles with the flesh, uh, the, the wickedness of this world, the vexation and the temptation that comes from the world. Um, that God will, uh, God will strengthen you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that God will show you things like he's shown me. Okay, It doesn't matter how good you think you got your home. You, the re two reasons why you always keep going through your home every once in a while saying, praying and just walking around looking at things and praying saying, God, is my home a Bible-believing, God-fearing home? Is it a abstain from all appearance-free zone? The appearance of evil free zone, as I say. Place for you to come and be safe. Okay, that God's given you. One, God will bring across something. I've done videos where something I've had in, in my case of stuff I've collected over my lo whole life traveling around the world. And I find things that are wicked that's been there all along. But the bi other big thing, the reason you do it, is because there's times you might bring something in your home unknowingly, like I did. And wickedness, okay? This stuff here. So... Always, sanctification goes on your whole life till you die or till the catching away of the body of Christ. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for sticking this video out. And remember, this is our final authority. Okay, this is our foundation on matters of faith and practice. Remember, prove your own selves. Practice. When you stand for this book, how's your life? How are you living your life? Okay, if you believe in a pre-time of Jacob's trouble that Jesus could come back any moment, are you letting God sanctify your life and clean up your life when he says, get rid of that, or are you getting rid of that? Don't do this. Are you doing things that you're supposed to be doing? Reading your Bible, doing Bible studies, singing, doing work with your hands that you can give God thanks for. Okay, so I can go through this a lot more. But you know what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters in Christ. So... Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.